Greetings. This is your elder brother, Blacklight. Now, we're going to continue on talking about the golden rule. And we're going to continue on to talk, to, talking about all the other subjects I started part ones and I didn't finish up but today I'm going to talk about mental warfare we don't think that we in a war the other day we was playing the uh, war of Armageddon and by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he's telling us that we're in a war. But we still don't think so. And we still thinking that America, you know, is going to change and going to have feelings for us. And just because this election coming up, they, they're making uh, changes in, in some of their policies. But that's, that's lightweight stuff they're doing. But I want you to listen to this uh, brother Malcolm X and what he says about uh, how we approach uh, war. We are the violent group. We do, uh, we are taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to be, to obey the law, to respect everyone who respects us. We're taught to display courtesy, to be polite. But we're also taught that at any time, anyone in any way uh, inflicts or seeks to inflict violence upon us, we are within our religious rights to retaliate in self-defense to the maximum degree of our ability. We never initiate any violence upon anyone. But if anyone attacks us, we reserve the right to defend ourselves. So to accuse us of, of being violent is like accusing a man who is being lynched, who is being hung on a tree, uh, simply because he struggles vigorously against his lyncher. The victim is accused of violence, but the lyncher is never accused of violence. And I only point this out because the various racist groups that are set up in this country by whites and who have actually practiced violence against blacks for 400 years are never associated or identified or made synonymous with the term violence. But whites speak of Muslims almost synonymously with violence. Whenever Muslims are mentioned by them, violence is brought up. But, not, but it's not connected with any other group. This is a sort of a propaganda tactic or what I would call psychological warfare. Now, this is what Malcolm is talking about, the science of psychological warfare. Now this is a television program made by the U.S. Army on psychological warfare. But they're talking about another country. But this, I want you to peep the science of it. Now let's check it out. From Korea to Germany. From Alaska to Puerto Rico. All over the world, the United States Army is on the alert to defend our country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture, an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Captain Carl Zimmerman. In the past, we have seen and heard reports of our fighting army in action. Man-land weapons using firepower to defeat the enemy. 
But there is another very important phase of warfare. It has as its target fast. We have seen and heard reports of our fighting army in action. Man-land weapons using firepower to defeat the enemy. But there is another very important phase of warfare. It has as its target, not the body, but the mind of the enemy. Its mission is to influence the thoughts of the enemy soldier, and thereby weaken him. And at the same time, it brings to the no man's land of communism, the voice of the United Nations Command, and the voice of truth. This part of the big picture is psychological warfare. It is words and ideas and carries on where the weapons have left off. My name is Naftali Bennett, and I'm Minister of Defense of the State of Israel. I want to share with you the single most important insight of the entire corona uh, epidemic. The most important thing, more than general social distancing, more than testing, 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 more than anything else, is to separate old people from younger people. The single most lethal combination is when the grandma hugs her grandson. Why is that? Because uh, Corona is a unique virus in the sense that it's way more lethal for old people than for young people. In many countries, uh, zero uh, young people died. Uh, in countries uh, that many people died, you have uh, 0% or 0.1% of folks under the age of 30 or 20. Whereas uh, old people uh, over the age of 80 and 70, uh, one out of five, one out of seven of them that get the virus die. So what we need to do over the next uh, period of time is take care of grandma and grandpa, but from far away, lots of WhatsApps and Skype and you name it. Uh, bring them food, clean the box before you, you leave, and then they take it in their house. But do not enter the house, do not hug them, because you're risking them. All, all this is showing you that the uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad knew about the psychological warfare. First they said that uh, it affected old people. Now they're saying it, it affects more black people. Now they're saying it affects black men more. They keep changing, keep changing. And all of this psychological warfare. He who has the goal is the rule, the golden rule. Black people is the white man's black gold, not, not oil. He gets his energy from us, but he is a uh, out to depopulate the planet so he can manage it. Manage it. Just just like uh, they call in business uh, downsizing. Downsizing the planet so he can manage the whole planet. And he knows that the black man worship the golden calf. This first, uh, the first member of the black nation to be controlled and manipulated by the Caucasian is the black woman. So she's the first teacher. She teaches the children about the environment and how to get along in the environment. In the environment. 
she teaches them to she teaches them subconsciously to worship the Caucasian. Religion got to her in the form of a white Jesus. And even to, to, to till this day, they worship the Caucasian. Yeah, I don't care if you in the nation of Islam. If you're not in the nation of Islam, you don't train up warriors. You know, you don't, when they born, you take them to the nation. But when they come home, you be looking at that television. You know, when they go to, when you go to the temple meetings, you take them to, you take them up there when they little. But when you come home, you sit, you, you, some of y'all be looking at the soap operas. Some of y'all be looking at them game shows. Some of y'all be looking at movies. And there's a psychological message in all the movies. Psychological warfare on television. Psychological warfare in them games, them video games. Psychological warfare in the sports. Everything that you see on the two is psychological warfare. Subliminal. That means they hide it. To be continued. This is Black Light.